All right, here we are. Let's talk about uh, velocity saturation in a simplified theory. So we had discussed before that carriers are not accelerated in a semiconductor um, at infinitum. They, they are um, reaching some saturation velocity um, eventually. So at, at small electric fields, um, they flow uh, or they have a velocity uh, proportional to the electric field, but eventually um, that tapers out to, to scattering processes in the device. All right, we had written down expressions for such a saturation velocity based on some critical field after which the velocity tapers off. And um, here's the expression. We basically had, um, at some point, uh, reached a saturation velocity that is fixed. And here's sort of an expression uh, as a function of electric field. Now you can think of that um, as um, also a, a, a function of mobility, right? You can say that uh, the mobility in the channel is becoming a function of space, since um, velocity cannot uh, just uh, increase indefinitely. So in the previous expressions, we had just talked about mobility and calculated um, the differentials of the potential, which was the electric field, and assumed that this will be a linear function. Now we can just form in an expression of a mobility that will be part of a, um, a, a critical, uh, or limited by some critical field above which the mobility will taper out as well. So we can do that in this model. You remember uh, seeing these equations um, as we uh, calculate uh, the current um, uh, throughout the MOSFET. And what we've done is integrate um, the charges uh, along the channel uh, and calculated their acceleration in the channel as well. So we had these mobility terms times electric field times charge uh, giving us a current flow in each segment of the device. And then we summed up the, the integral. Now we could argue that um, uh, well, beforehand we had uh, divided out the mobility and pulled out the mobility and just were left with the integration of charges. But now we could uh, consider the mobility as part of, a, of the integral as well. All right, so, so let's do that where um, we're uh, now including the mobility uh, uh, expression explicitly uh, in, in the sum and um, carry this calculation forward. So we have a charge distribution, we have a velocity distribution, and somewhere in the channel, as a function of the uh, potential, we will saturate the mobility. All right, so you can carry out this calculation and introduce, um, uh, instead of the sum of our discrete elements, we'll of course do the integral uh, along the channel. And just as what we've done before, we integrate here over the uh, distribution of the potential uh, due to the drain voltage uh, along the channel. Again, this integral here we can do, it's just, uh, it is linear in voltage, so it turns into linear and square. We integrate it up from zero to Vd. That's again the square law we had seen before, but now we have the mobility built into the integral on the left-hand side. Okay. Um, now we split out uh, this double integral. One is a function of distance, the other is a function of, of voltage. Uh, and you get an expression that's a, a little bit more lengthy, but it has the electric field in the, uh, the critical electric field at which the, uh, the carriers will be saturated uh, built in. Okay, so now you have a new uh, JD that now has the critical field in it. And we can look at this expression in a, li a little bit more detail, okay? So we have the same discussion of what we had before, where we have the rise here. And this theory really gives us the, the saturation uh, um, a current that we can achieve, and it has a decent expression for the rise, uh, the linear rise. But let's look at this in regard to uh, the distance of the channel, right? Vis-a-vis -vis the, the channel length 
and the critical length of the device. All right, let's assume we have very small channel lengths uh, and we have very high drain biases, okay? So we will be um, uh, having an expression here that becomes independent of the channel length, right? If we can uh, neglect this term of channel length compared to the to a large drain voltage um, across uh, with a critical field uh, that is equivalent to a distance, if that uh, drain voltage is large co uh, uh, compared to the channel length, then um, basically this expression becomes independent of the channel length. That means um, you're, you're pushing the charge through with an electric field and, and um, uh, with a saturated velocity. Your carriers are running that fast through the structure that the channel length is not becoming important anymore. Um, and it also means that in the linear region that uh, the channel resistance we have calculated is independent of the channel length, which is kind of interesting. Again, it, it makes the case that at high velocity, once you're reaching critical velocities and cri high electric fields, what happens uh, down the length of the channel is less important. Okay, so let's calculate VDSAT and IDSAT, these saturation velocities here, um, um, voltages here that uh, 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 saturate the current. Uh, again, we just set the uh, differential with uh, VDS to zero, find the maximum of this uh, parabolic-like uh, expression, but remember now we have VD in here, also in the uh, denominator, not just here as a, a parabolic expression, so doing that differential is a little bit more push-ups, but I'm sure you could handle it and uh, do this by um, taking a log and doing the derivative there, you'll find an expression that's a little bit more lengthy. But nevertheless, it's just an analytical expression that now depends on uh, channel length and the saturation velocity. All right, so uh, this is not very hard. Uh, you can uh, just notice that this saturation uh, voltage is now smaller than the original voltage we had uh, here. Okay, so uh, effectively uh, the the voltage by which uh, the system is saturating is getting reduced. Okay, so the you're not pushing as much uh, current into the system like this, which also then means um, uh, in this expression, if you plug in the saturation uh, voltage into this expression, your current will also uh, also be slightly altered. Okay, now. Let's look at uh, uh, the behavior when we make this channel really short, okay? Let's look at the saturation uh, voltage when we make the channel short. You can expand uh, this. You have um, Vg minus V threshold in here and in here. Um, you need to do, um, uh, you can do this multiple ways. You can divide uh, through by the square root and you'll see you end up having a square root behavior, assuming for a small channel you can neglect one of the terms, you have a square root behavior in VDSAT. That is, depending on the channel length and of the a gate minus threshold. Okay, so this is not very hard to do. Uh, you can now plug this back into your uh, saturation current that we had uh, calculated on the previous slide, and you crank through the numbers and you find that now ID sat goes linearly as the gate uh, the, uh, the gate voltage or in this case it's um, yeah okay so this means it's complete velocity saturation and it becomes completely independent of the uh, the channel length okay independent of the length of the channel uh, when you drive the device completely at its limit of uh, uh, carrier saturation. Now, the interesting thing is you can look at the signature of this veloc velocity saturation by plotting these IVs. So before we had our square law uh, dependence as you ramp up VGS, we calculated a, a, a drain current that goes up 
as the square of Vg minus uh, v, v threshold. Okay? So, now if you look at the expression we had on the previous slide and plot it, what you'll find is it goes linearly. So, power 1 uh, with Vg minus V threshold. So, um, it's just a little exponent, but what that means is uh, the IVs behave quite differently. So just uh, step back, squint a little bit. Obviously, this behavior here goes as a square versus here it go comes linearly, right? So there's a way you can measure from experimental curves how uh, much uh, you're limited by saturation versus um, being in the long channel limit. Okay, so you can measure that by the, uh, the output characteristics of your transistor and measure effectively the separation of these lines um, for constant VGS. Okay, all right, so in practice that means uh, you can measure transistors and your behavior is somewhere proportional VG minus V uh, threshold to a power of alpha, where alpha is between 1 and 2. So if you're at 2, you're in the long channel limit. If you're at 1, you're in the complete velocity saturation limit. Okay? So depending on the geometry and the dependence uh, along the channel, the length of the channel, um, and uh, the ability to drive uh, uh, carriers at a certain velocity, you end up with a current expression. Okay? In the next segment, we'll talk a little bit about um, how valid this... Uh, uh, velocity saturation is and some of the limits uh, for small transistors. So that's the topic of the next section. I'll see you then. Thank you.